Personally, I've gone to Tumaini, a very good farm, which is very focused on what they are doing in terms of poultry farming, dairy farming, fish farming. So they wanted to know where, where the bank can come in. And the bank can come in in any organization, be it a farm, be it a school. So the bank has products for each and every one of us. So for farmers, farmers who are here, the ones who visited, we really encourage you to bank your products, bank your income, okay? So you begin by opening an account for the farm. Or if you've not registered the farm, you can open it under your name. But we'll know that the proceeds that are going to that account are coming from the farm. Because those are the basics that the bank looks at before they want to support you, okay? So we advise that we begin the journey by opening an account. Then when you're doing the sales, because you've seen that most of the farmers and most of the organizations we visited, they are making some good money. But you are wondering where the money goes because you can be able to maybe milk today, sell the milk, but there's no record. There's no anywhere that is showing in the bank that you're making this much per day, per week, per month, per year. So when you're coming to us for financing or for support, we really struggle to know where we can come in because we don't have your record. Yes, you're making money, but it's not on any record. It's not receipted and it's not banked. So when you come to Sam and tell him, really, I have a big farm. It is valued worth millions. I really want you to advance me my money, some money to grow the business. And Sam tells you, really, I can't support because I really don't know. Yes, from the ground, we can see that you have here, you built here, you have so many cows. But where is the money going to? Do you just sell and consume the same money the same day without having a record? So to those who are having these institutions, we are really encouraging that you bank the money and you are not saying that the money should stay in the bank. You can withdraw as immediate as the time you've banked so long as that record is kept. And we have avenues for that. That's why Dominic is here, to, he's in charge of channels. By channels we mean we are bringing the bank closer to you. You do not need to come to the bank to bank and withdraw your money, okay? Sasawa. So we have tills, which we can give you even it at your farm. Whenever somebody wants to come and buy that milk, want to come and buy that veggies, you just share with them the till number, which is directly linked to your account. And the money settles to your account instantly. So whether it's 10 bob or 100 shillings or 1,000 shillings, please advise them to pay through the till number. So the money will go to the account, and then you can still access the money either through mobile banking or internet banking. So we have people who are still saying that, oh, we don't want to come to the KCB because KCB has long queues. And we as bankers, we are wondering why you're coming to the bank. Because we, all don't, we also don't want you to come to the bank eh? and get it congested. We are trying to give you channels for transacting. And I know most of us are mobile banking. Since we set you up on mobile banking, we don't expect you to come to the bank unless, it's, it's, unless there's a downtime. But please embrace the channels. I've just advised that the, 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 the firms adopt the tills or the pay bills, which are linked to the bank. And those things are given at the bank. You don't need to go to Safaricom or elsewhere. You come to the bank, we open for you an account. We give you a till number, which is linked to the account number. We also connect your account to mobile banking. So in case the money is in the account, you can always either M-Pesa or you can send it to your suppliers directly. And they have a record. So one month, three months, six months down the line, if you're stuck and you want some money to either buy some cows, you want to expand to do a construction, when you come to us and we look, we can now start talking that this one, according to the way you've been operating, we can advance you this much. So that's how the bank comes in. We you are financial advisors and we are here to do that. We've also noticed some opportunities in terms of insurance. And you should know that KCB does all types of insurance, from motor vehicle to education policies to agro-based insurance. In KCB Kakamega, I've insured so many people who have cows, uh, which they feel, I need to insure these cows. You come to us and tell us, I have this number of cows. Uh, please prepare for, we'll come to the ground, see the number of cows you're having their value, and then we'll be able to give insurance. Just in case 
these very expensive cows that you are rearing, the 250,000, the 300,000, thus in case you lose any one of them, we are able to pay you back the cow that you lost. We ensure crops. Even this maize that you are seeing, I know it looks like a story, but we can do insurance for your crop. If you feel like you can plant crops, you just come to us for that product for crop insurance. We'll come and look at it and give you a cover. You pay a small premium, and in case the crop fails, we'll be able to reimburse you the money that you insured with. So that is about agro financing. We give financing to farmers. Our partnership with Siamberere currently is through KCB Foundation. Uh, and that's how we come in with this program. So, like tomorrow, we'll be here for interviews. For people, we want to, them to come here and be trained on specific value chains that they feel comfortable with. So, together with the college, we've mobilized people around. One minute, thank you. Mobilized people around. They will be here tomorrow for interviews. If they pass, they'll be here for maybe three, four months, trained in the various sectors, be it horticulture, be it, be it uh, poultry farming. So after the four months, they'll be certified that these people are good in this sector. Once they are certified and they've gone through KCB Foundation, we'll be able to finance them once they're out there to do the project that they've come here to study. If they did poultry, we'll finance them to construct a poultry farm, or they can buy those chickens and start rearing for free. Once they do, they do farming for a while and they're able to start generating income, that's when we expect them to start at least repaying the money we gave them, whether it's half a million or a million. So these people will be here tomorrow, and we really encourage, whenever you hear that KCB Foundation has announced partnership with Shamberere, partnership with Sigalagala, please advise your people, the Form 4 dropouts, the entrepreneurs out there, to apply. We pay for them full tuition, and then thereafter we finance their businesses out there. Out of time, please thank you for listening. And uh, I hope I've made a point. Thank you, Daniel. Yeah. Uh, as you've rightly put it, I think uh, there's a already fledging relationship between you and Shamberere. And uh, we believe that during those uh, you know, discussions where you'll be you know, looking into signing those agreements, uh, I believe the hub will uh, you know, also include, you know, in terms of... Uh, how joy can also come in so that we can have maybe clauses relating to uh, uh, the relationship that we want to build with the private sector. That's agreeable, right? Yeah. So thank you very much, KCB. Uh, uh, we will go straight to the session that we had uh, planned. And uh, I'll take this opportunity to invite uh, our first group that went to, to Maini, Miles of Smile. And I'll invite Dominic to come and share with us their story and what they found out at Tumaini. Okay, good afternoon again. I'm coming in as a secretary to the group Tumaini. I'm not now about KCB, it's about Tumaini. <laughs> so, thank you. We went to Tumaini as a group. That is... A a group of gentlemen, some ladies, and uh, that is to minimize of Smile Center. It's a children's home. At the same time, it's a farm. Our key, key, key interest was uh, on the farm, and uh, that is to Maini farm. We were delighted to see a wonderful work that's being done by the director for that farm, the manager, and all the people who have the in, who have uh, greatly given their input to see that, that firm being successful as it is. So our key, key points, we noted that from the director, they develop an interest in investing in uh, livestock farming. The interest for, for Tumaini Farm came as a result of the need for milk because uh, apparently that farm... It's also, it's also called to Maini Miles of Smiles Children's Home. So when uh, these children, they needed to have quality milk to feed, to feed these children f in that children's home. So they saw it, instead of buying milk, let, 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 let them have uh, clean, healthy milk from their own farm. 
So they started mixed farming, and uh, when they started, they only had two cattle, that is two dairy, dairy cattle, fresh and cattle, but uh, with time they expanded. So Tumaini farm does, uh, it, it, uh, it does horticultural farming, fish farming, poultry farming, agroponics, and they, to save on, uh, to ensure that there's no thing that goes into wastage, they eventually set up a biodigester that produces manure and silari that is used for the farm produce. So at the, at the livestock production farm, that is livestock, we, we notice that they have four freshians and one asher. The, fresh, the production of the freshian, that is the freshian, one, one of the freshian produces 24 liters of milk at the time of calving. The rest freshian, they produce 20, milk, 20 liters of milk. So they are doing very great. And uh, we were delighted, we were very happy for the great work they are doing. And we noticed some gaps and uh, they need support. Actually, one of them, the, 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 the livestock structure, it's lacking the shed, it's called shed nets. Yeah, shed nets, so that uh, to prevent this, this freshness from uh, stress that arises from heat and maybe it's a fly. And uh, one, uh, one of the opportunity, one of the greatest uh, employment, they have offered employment to seven people. That is uh, one farm manager and the rest who are taking care of the, the farm, that is livestock farm, poultry farm, the pond, the fish pond. So the, we also know that on average after calving that, the, taking care of all the costs, the feeding costs, they can be able to earn 30K per, per month. One, another gap, another gap notice the lack of technical expertise, especially when, when formulation of the feeds I think there we can, we, 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 through the partnership with the Joy Foundation or Joy Project, we can come in to chip, or chip in to see if they can be able to be, to have, to be hiring technical experts that satisfy or understand the formulation of milk so that uh, they can be able to get greater output from their farm or this business. So on, uh, on, the, on the, the other part, the other project they do is poultry, and poultry is, they do kenyeji, purely kenyeji, and uh, improved kenyeji, that's from Calro. So the director also noted some gap and opportunity, given a, a, a chance or given funding, they can expand that uh, poultry house so that they can go large scale, because uh, we, they, uh, this, they are currently doing small scale, but although they are doing very great, but given a chance to expand that poultry house so that it can accommodate uh, many or large stock of poultry, of chicken, they'll be in a better place. Also on the same, same, on the same part, the technical expertise, that is technical, the person with technical know-how on uh, poultry production, that's from brooding, the other area, up to, you understand when I say brooding, isn't it? We are all agrarian, or, or, we, are, or we all have agricultural knowledge, or we have ever stepped in an agriculture class, if you are older, or you school in Moy era, whereby people used to be trained on agriculture. But agriculture is basic. We do agriculture as, in a tradition, as a traditional venture. But uh, it's, we are here so that we can do agribusiness to be able to generate income and, and get money from agriculture. So on the other side, we, 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 the other side they have a, a, a pond. And uh, also, the pond is doing well. They have, they have kept around 700 finger, finger lights in, in that pond. Also on the, on the pond is the size. Given a chance, they can also expand, have a, an additional fish pond, because the current one that they are, they are having, it's smaller in size. 
accommodating 700 fingerless on a pond that is nine meters squared, you see it's squeezed. So there is competition of both food, oxygen, and everything that they, in the ecosystem that these fing fingerless they need to f to get so that they grow in size, so that they uh, get the f so that they fetch higher market price because of their size at the time of harvesting. So, given an opportunity, if they join or any other stakeholder that is in this house or in the midst of this meeting they can come in and, and fund them so that they expand the production, it will be taken in kind. Another area is horticulture. Horticulture in, from, <coughs> I believe I have said that, I, I've noted, you have noted that Tumaini farm also does biodigester, whereby they get Silari from as a waste, as a end product from that biodigester and manure that is used to support the farm in terms of fertilizer. You know, fertilizer prices have gone up, but uh, they are trying to cut the cost by generating their, by producing their own fertilizer, their own input. That is uh, so. If they do sukuma wiki, maize, animal feed. That is. Uh, Lusan on their farm, which 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 is supported by manure or silari that they get from this digester. So all said and done, I believe that's what we have noted at uh, Tumaini Farm, or to call it Tumaini Smiles of or oh, Miles of Smiles Center. That's children's home. Um, Madam also noted that they also support the community through widow, wid, widow program, whereby they give wid, widows some of the some of those heifers they donate to widows, and the widows have a program whereby the first calf they give back to the to the farm so that they can also instead of buying new new new, new calves, so when when uh, when a widow is given the, the heifer and the heifer calves down that first calf they they give back to the farm so that the farm can also donate it to another widow. So that was one of the humanitarian activities they indulge in and supporting the children or, or, or orphanage through their program. Thanks for listening. Uh, let's give a hand to the secretary and the Tumaini team. Thank you. Uh, thank you for providing uh, that extensive SWOT analysis of uh, Tumaini and uh, maybe I'd just like to add that um, you know Tumaini have been working closely with uh, Shambarere TTI um, they've been taking uh, students on internship yeah and uh, these are kind of relationship that we are looking at having also with you and the hub in terms of offering opportunities and support to the youth that are passing through the hub. Uh, our second presentation will come from a group that went to Alvin Farm. Uh, I'll request Rispa to come and share with us. Hi, everyone. So we visited the Alvin Farm. It's called Alvin PNP Farm. It was founded in 2014. They started with 300 chicks. However, they lost 13, but they never gave up. They are still doing their poultry. So the farm has several projects. They currently have pigs, which amounts to 112. Chicken, that is 200. Turkey, 21. And geese was two. So their main project is piggery. Previously, they started with 300K. That is the capital invested. And then... From by last year, they were investing two, two million. So the project was able to break even after the three years. So according to him, the cost of feeding one pig, when you buy the commercial feeds, it costs you 12,000. But after the six months, that's after the six months, when you want to sell the pig, you can sell it directly at 18,000. And if at all you can, so his secret is to value add. That's value adding meaning you serve the pig. So when you serve the pig, you are able to sell it at 40,000. So the choice is yours. So uh, according to him, 
regarding to the selection of breed. So he has a mixed breed farming. And uh, to maybe to advise a layman on the selection of the pig, he said that you have to consider maybe the number of teeth, the adaptability. Actually, those are the main things, and also your ability to manage them. Then, along with the process, previously he was spending the 12,000 to feed one pig. So he decided to make his own feeds, which he said that he has already been able to cut down the cost between 45 and 50%, which is a great move. And currently he has six guys. He has employed actually the youth. So he has two, six chances for employment and is looking forward at creating more, which says that he is aiming at employing four more, that is 10 youth. Then he also suggested that upon the creation of the curriculum, it, will be, it should be skills specified, like teach someone exact thing that he has to be taught on the ground, which is maybe more of experiential learning. Regarding the marketing, he creates his own linkages. He doesn't go for the farmer's choice, which is actually the best choice that you can do as a farmer. Then he also offers the free training, that is on the own job trainings. So if you're interested to do the piggery, you can also meet him. And the good thing is, he's present here with us, so maybe we'll meet him after. His final words were, agribusiness pays. It only calls for passion and patience. Then he suggested according to the, maybe the normal norm that you always have, that keeping pigs, they are that actually his farm is so clean. You'll just be impressed being there. So agribusiness is not a dirty game. However, okay, okay, we may say it's a dirty game, but finally, you have the clean money. Okay. So I think that's the general thing that we made. So you create your own market. You have passion and patience. Definitely you succeed in agribusiness. Thank you. Let's give a hand to Alvin Farm Group. And uh, as uh, she has rightly indicated, uh, Alvin Farm proprietor is here. Uh, I'll give him time shortly after this so that he can also say hello to us. He's just joined us. Uh, this opportunity I'll give to uh, the group that went to Labed Cash, uh, Madam Grace. Good afternoon once again. I'm Grace, as I said earlier. Uh, I represent the team that went to Labed Cash Farm. We were 10. Maybe I would ask the team to rise up and say hello so that you can know them. And uh, say hello. <laughs> Thank you so much. That is the team that did uh, go to of uh, Labed Cash. Uh, we found out that Labed Cash farm, personally, I was passionate about the farm. When I saw what is happening there, I just said we are rich in agriculture. And uh, because the managing director of the farm is here, maybe you just say hi before you're given the opportunity by joy. Just yeah, start up and wave. I don't know how many minutes I'm given to do my presentation because five, five minutes, yet I have a, a, a demonstration video that will take 15 minutes. Is that too much? We, we can play it later. Just yeah, it can be played later. We, were, we took about one hour to go through the demonstration farm. We started at uh, 9.56 and ended at uh, 10.56. So the farm has uh, three farms joined together in different locations. And uh, they have five employees. And uh, actually they also have trainees who help them in the farm. Uh, the farm is composed of a hatchery 
for fingerlings, uh, outgrowers, farm table size fish, and also they process and dispose to farmers the fish. But mainly it is for fingerlings production. They do three types of fish, tilapia, catfish, and ornamental, which is summarized in their video. The business is around this place in Kakamega, and uh, the distance we were not able to tell because we went by the bus. They have attaches who they train, and also they have honey. They refine honey, which is uh, healthy, and also they sell. They do have uh, they do produce milk, they keep birds, and also do agroforestry. Those who went with us will confirm that we enjoyed walking around the farm. And uh, their fingerlings is about 489,000, which we, when we were there, we even found people coming to buy, which was also encouraging. We saw it, they have local people buying and also they sell to the hotels. They market their products. But now, fish farming is one area where there is potential, as said by the managing director. That is what they major on. And uh, we were glad that uh, what is there in their brochure is true. We saw it. They also adopt sustainable business approach in horticulture and ensure sustainability of their food. They partner with Joy, which we also saw. Uh, the only challenge that the farm has is on finance. Uh, maybe if I go by the questions that were presented to us, I will say, uh, I will say that uh, we, rit we rated the business and found out that they are mature. The business is mature. Though they have uh, profit, they also run at a loss. If you look at their production, they use uh, power to pump the water that is... Uh, needed at the ponds. So power is quite expensive, as you all know, and uh, maybe they're thinking of solarizing the, 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 the water pump so that they don't incur a lot in their production. Also, because uh, they have about 200 ponds, huh? they are also looking at uh, maybe doing the production of the feeds of the fingerlings by themselves so that they can employ quite a number of our young youths who are around the region or even outside our, our, our region. So um, they also have a, a challenge in uh, marketing their products. Though they are the most favorable farm around because there are about two who are registered in this area but uh, they still need ways of marketing their products so they use Facebook, WhatsApp and uh, other means but we were also advising them that they may go online to market their products maybe through websites so that they can get profit um, uh, they have opportunities. Um, the high number of ponds that they have uh, demand for manufacturing of their own fish that I've said. They also create jobs for the youth, so they need that knowledge and training or uh, capacity building so that they are also able to formulate their own feeds through training that they will get. So they also need enough expertise 
since we all know that we are all going the technology way, if they can be trained continuously on the technologies that are around, they will appreciate. Thank you so much. Maybe you'll have time to run the dummy of the demonstration. Thank you. Uh, Santi Sana, uh, group from Labed Cash. Uh, I believe that we will find time to, of course, uh, show the video uh, of the enterprise at some point. Uh, before we move to the last group, uh, I'd like to take this opportunity to recognize the presence of uh, County Director Tivet, Mr. Joseph Sunguti. I think I'll give uh, Madam Principal shortly after the presentation uh, to just allow him to greet us. So kindly, uh, the last group, uh, Norbert. Good afternoon. I'm representing uh, the group which went to Imboka. I would wish to those members who joined uh, Evans to stand up and wave. <coughs> wow. So Evans has done a lot of work, eh? and, uh, <laughs> and it's uh, fortunate that he's around. He will uh, tell us more. I don't want to preempt what he has said. So uh, on my observation, what he told us, it, uh, Imboka was established in 2016 and formalized in 2019. So what they do, they connect farmers to the market and SMEs. So what they sell is uh, they sell spices, uh, uh, fruits, honey, and AL fees. Uh, what uh, the, the, the mode of delivery, you know, farmers, he said that he's in a strategic point where per day, 500 500 uh, locals, so those people are living along this route, are uh, passing by. So he sells are uh, too high. So another thing which he said is uh, his delivery is through motor, motor bikes, online and offline sales. Opportunities which are there in his farm is uh, the, the, he want to engage more farmers to produce vegetables and uh, fruits. Warehousing logistics is what he's missing now, because he wanted to, he's uh, aspiring to have a, a gold, gold rooms for storing of his goods. Uh, uh, also, value addition, that's what he's, he wants to uh, support for, for that, so that he can increase the shelf life for his uh, or our produce. And also, exports. Export is what he aspires. He's saying by June, he will do deliveries to Dubai. I hope he will give us more details on that. The linkages on this app, the opportunities which are there, is that he uh, can accommodate uh, four attaches. So with the app, he will get some uh, employee, uh, not employee students coming from this uh, institute to join him. Job opportunities, he has a capacity of... Uh, about five, and I'm sure with this growth, it will employ more. And that also from the app, uh, <coughs> he's using smart tools. Smart tools which can be fabricated from uh, here, perhaps, through the, the, the skills provided by the institution. And then the, the challenge he also has is the data handling. So he needs support on uh, ICT. Also, what is he, he, the challenge he has because uh, the cost of production, maybe it can, advise, it can be advised through the help or other, other means uh, on the packaging materials. Because that's, he said it's expensive and he would wish to maybe get some advice on that. And also, another form of engagement he aspires to engage is uh, Mamambogas. Mamambogas are many and he wants to use them as the major outlets and the main agents. I think that's much he said, but the presentation he gave was very wonderful. So I think uh, I may not have covered most, and he will when he comes here. Thank you. Thank you, Norbert and uh, Imboga Group for that uh, presentation. And uh, as you can see from, uh, you know, 
uh, these presentations. Eh? These, these are enterprises that are already in some way uh, working closely with uh, Shamberere. Of course, if you look at Alvin Farm, uh, they are already sponsoring even a student here, you know, to learn uh, farm management to support the enterprise. Uh, we have uh, Tumaini, who their current manager is a student from Shamberere. Yeah? So, you know, these relationships are the things that we want to, you know, also have with you, uh, yourself, your enterprise, uh, together with the, with the hub, so that, you know, we can boost these um, uh, employment opportunities for the youth. Uh, I'd like to take this opportunity to just call uh, Alvin Farm Director, just to come and say hello and a word. He's here. Welcome. Uh, good afternoon, all of you. Uh, my name is Festo, proprietor of Alvin PNP Farm. I'll be very short. The farm we are still growing, as he has said. Uh, we are spot, we are paying hundred uh, percent college fee for one of the youth who is here and uh, he's working for the farm. So, so. Um, I, I hope I'll still sponsor more students to come here. I'll, I'll take three for attachments, maybe come September, and uh, mentor and train them. Uh, that's all I can say, but thank you for this opportunity. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Alvin. Uh, I'd like to take this opportunity to call on Madam Principal to welcome Mr. Sumuti to just say hello to the learning route. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I want to thank all the members for the patience they've had since yesterday. And this far, we are doing well. And to welcome the the new group that came in today, the group from KCB and the group from Lake Basin, feel most welcome. Uh, with us is our county director of Tibet, Kakamega, Vihiga, Siaya, Kisumu. I don't know, there's another, there's another county I've forgotten. Yeah, he... Uh, is in charge of those counties. Um, director, we started this program yesterday. Uh, we are calling it Learning Root Workshop, where we are sharing um, the stakeholders and joy uh, partners are sharing. Uh, and yesterday, we had all the groups introduce themselves and say what activities they're involved in. We also told them what we do in Shamberere and why we are the right people to take up the JOY project. Uh, today, we went to see the various farms and the activities in those farms. And when you came in, you were just receiving reports of the same. And uh, I'm sure members here have a lot of insights for the JOY project that they're going to share with us. When we go into the plenary sessions, we know we shall be better than who we were when we started yesterday. So without wasting time, I would like to welcome our county director, Tivet, Mr. Joseph Sunguti to talk to us. Karibu Sana Direct. Um, thank you so much, um, Principal. Um, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Um, I'm sorry to have come, to come late like this, but uh, I want to tell you that uh, I'm not new to joy activities. 
Um, I was at the beginning, I was there at the inception. In fact, when Morgan came to my office uh, to discuss about joy, uh, I asked him it was okay. Uh, I linked him to the national director and linked him to the principal secretary and uh, they okayed the event, the, the project. I'm calling it a, bro a project because it is a project. Um, I identify myself therefore with, uh, with this uh, group and because as I've said, I'm not new to it. When we had the first or the initial meetings in uh, Kuru, Ijaton University, we were there for two days. Then there were other meetings here in, um, at Shambelere, just to put things together. And I'm happy it has culminated into what we have today. Uh, it's just unfortunate that um, I hold four counties uh, on my shoulders, uh, Kakamega, Buhiga, Kisumu, and uh, Siaya. And yesterday when you started these activities, I knew I'll be late. I was doing, I had a function at Bondo, uh, very far away from here in Siaya. Today I would have come in the morning, but again, we had a graduation ceremony at uh, the Galagala National Polytechnic. When uh, my superiors are coming around, like the PS, the principal secretary, that is, and the director, national Trash director, I have to flank them. It is imperative that I must, as a county director, welcome them and sit with them until they leave. So the moment they left, after the graduation ceremony, I came to see how you are going on. Um, I'm very happy that you started and uh, you are going on well. I want to say welcome to the county and to this institution in particular. And please go on with what you are doing without fear or favor, you know, <laughs> without any fears. Just work. We want to make a joy activities a reality here, uh, and there's no turning back to it, because the choice of this um, place as a hub uh, was done uh, with all the factors that are in this booklet, and therefore there's no turning back to it. I want to encourage each one of you to work hard and ensure that this uh, succeeds in this county. And as we team up one time together with the project in Ijaton and also Kilifi, and maybe one time we shall also exchange notes with Cameroon, Jombe, there's no problem. Uh, uh, we can team up and see what they are doing. They also see what we are doing in a, some kind of exchange program. There's no problem with that. And therefore, mine is to encourage you to go on and uh, so that we get to the very end and we make this uh, project flourish in this part of the country. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, Buona Director, and uh, feel most welcome to the learning route Kakamega County. Uh, I'd like to take this opportunity to go to the next section of uh, this program, and I would like to invite uh, Greening Opportunities Consultant, Mr. Sam Bosa, uh, as he is coming. You're welcome. Thank you, Morgan. Uh, 
Um, yeah, um, I'd like to welcome you all back from the different um, visits that uh, we had this morning. They were very enriching in terms of uh, our understanding of what different people are doing on the ground. So, and I, as a, somebody that doesn't come from Kenya, it was an opportunity for me to learn practically what is happening on the ground. My name is Sam Bosa. Um, I'm Ugandan, but um, on this project, I and a colleague, um, can you project? Um, a colleague, hub program for IFAD in the several countries where it's being implemented and um, Joy is one of them is the version for Kenya um, yeah to be honest I listening to you people from yesterday and um, hearing what you're doing I think I'm going to be preaching to the already converted in as far as the uh, um, embracing green approach is concerned. But probably what I'm going to do is more of uh, creating or proposing a, from, a framework within which we should look at this all green um, approach um, dimension uh, in as far as the skill side of things is concerned. So, um, um, my presentation is going to follow, uh, next slide please, um, these are just pictures depicting some of the things um, around green. Next slide. Yeah, um, we are going, first of all, members here have had green but often they, each, each one of you may have their own understanding of what it is. Um, we want to create a framework within which we all understand what the green dimension is, what are green jobs, um, why they are relevant for this program, um, or how can this program actually promote um, green jobs. Um, the sort of context we we've already done some um, analysis of uh, Kenya as a country in terms of where green is as far as agriculture sector is concerned um, and then of course the most important aspect of it will be around the green skills um, this whole program being um, a focus on youth employment um, of course, if time allows, we will have uh, some reflections. Um, next slide, please. Yeah, so we adopt the ILO uh, definition or understanding of uh, green jobs, and um, these are simply products and services. Um, which either directly or indirectly uh, reduce environmental degradation and uh, broadly, you know, create green or uh, environmentally, socially, and economically sustainable enterprises and economies. So anything that um, generates employment value, but from the perspective of the environment, um, we term that as an um, a green job. So, green jobs can be around reducing green gas, greenhouse gas emissions. It can be they can be about um, conservation. They can be about minimizing of waste and pollution and, and so on. So, this is the kind of framework within which we look at green jobs. Um, of course, next slide, please. There is a, a sort of, uh, sometimes it is difficult 
tell to what text. extent we should look at a green job? Um, is it the process? Is it the product? Can a, a, a green product be produced through a non-green a, a process? You know, these sort of debates continue. Um, but um, it is tied in the green job um, aspect is tied in with uh, what we call decent work or decent jobs. As you hear the word decent, it's all about decent working conditions, um, whether payments to workers, work, the actual conditions, terms and all that. So um, th that's the broader framework within which we look at green jobs. Next slide. Um, these are some of the examples. So you can, green, you can cre create green jobs through greening processes. Um, where, for example, you adopt uh, renewable energy in place of uh, um, the normal hydroelectricity. Um, you can um, green, create green jobs through products and services, as well as nature conservation. So, um, so w when it comes to agriculture, which is the focus of joy, or IFAD, for that matter, what is it that we are talking about? Um, what is the relationship between agriculture and agricultural production or value chains and green jobs? Uh, next slide, please. Okay. Um, so, as a sort of an overview about agriculture and um, the environment. First of all, we all acknowledge the role of agriculture in our economies. I won't dwell on that. Um, but we also know that um, agriculture is both a contributor to environmental degradation and climate uh, change, but at the same time a victim you know, it's affected by these problems that it creates. In other words, we are talking of sustainability. Um, we, we, we see a lot of land degradation um, being brought about by the different agricultural practices. Um, desertification, you know, two-thirds of sub-Saharan Africa, uh, arable land is, de is considered degraded. So what can a program like JOYS or other agriculture programs do to address some of these problems? So this is where we are coming from. Um, we talk of food waste, um, you know, and, and food waste happens at different stages, within the farm, off the farm, through handling, and so on and so forth. So um, what can be done to address this problem. And any activity around reducing food losses is considered a green approach. And it comes with opportunities. Um, so as stakeholders um, in a program like JOY, um, if you adopted um, coordinated approaches, there is potential to promote green jobs in agriculture. Um, also, the other relevance of this, um, of green jobs in agriculture is that given our awareness that young people are less likely to be involved in agriculture for whatever reasons, uh, green jobs create an avenue for increasing the scope of their participation in agriculture, which, of course, is a good thing. Next slide, please. Yeah, so when we are talking of greening agriculture, we look at it in mainly two dimensions. One is adopting green approaches, sustainable, sustainability approaches in whatever we do in the sector. Um, for example, uh, cl uh, sorry, climate smart agriculture, which looks at both mitigation and adaptation, 
Um, the no waste policy, I saw so many people today, um, wherever we went, um, are already involved in this, which is good. Um, integrated land use and management, um, resource efficiency, as you can see, how can we make the resources that affect agriculture efficiently used? How can we increase efficiency? And um, the examples there are water and energy. Uh, we are talking of organic inputs, which feed into now the organic value chain. You know, whether it's organic fertilizers, organic pesticides, organic products themselves, and so on. Um, and then, of course, the supportive um, renewable energy approaches, um, solar, biogas, um, efficient cook, cook, cooking technologies, uh, like the energy saving stoves, which I'm sure I, all of you here know about. Um, the other way through which we could, uh, we can green um, the hubs um, is uh, developing markets for green products and services. Um, this is an area that is uh, affecting um, a lot uh, the development of uh, the green economy. Um, the markets are not yet well uh, developed. Um, and then also the issue of policies. Um, for example, for you to be certified as a green, rather, to claim uh, 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 an organic producer, you need to be certified. And uh, certifying organic products, one of the hard things to do, not just in Kenya, but in many countries. It is very costly. Certifiers normally tend to come from abroad. The government, in many cases, is looking the other way, and so on and so forth. So, but that does not stop these efforts on the ground you know, um, to take place. Can I have the next slide, please? Yeah, these are images of uh, organic products. Um, mm. Next one. Yeah, that's organic coffee. Yeah, so um, when we are talking about green jobs, we need to understand the context in which they are existing within a given country. Um, we did an assessment of several of these countries where the, the hubs are being implemented, as I said, Kenya uh, among them, and uh, we realized from the different uh, consultations we had, including with uh, some members in this room, um, I think you will agree, and also based on what so far we've heard from each other here, right from yesterday, there seems to be considerable interest in green approaches, green enterprises. Um, this is a fact. Um, the gentleman over here is already heavily involved in some of these approaches. Um, and the others I had talk about this, whether it's aquaculture, you know, um, um, poultry, you, you have integrated biogas, uh, where we visited today, Mr. Alvin, no, I've forgotten his name, but uh, I don't know why the farm is called Alvin. Um, he, he was very passionate about integrating a lot of these approaches in his own setting. And um, he's doing very well, by the way, in terms of uh, the successes. For six years or so, uh, he said he doesn't use any, he doesn't spend on energy, cooking energy at his home. All he's doing is feed the biodigester with cow dung and that's it. You can imagine the amount of uh, resources being saved there and the benefits being um, this gas is clean energy. I mean, when you compare with charcoal or firewood. So, um, and then of course, uh, is uh, bringing on solar in all his uh, spaces. 
So, and I, I know many of you here are already using this. So, there is interest at both um, the state level, although the, 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 the um, magnitude might be different, but among the private actors, I think there is interest. Um, of course, as I said, there is a lot that needs to be done on the side of the market. Uh, the question is, what is it that can be done to stimulate these green products and services, to make them uh, more sustainable, to create a critical mass of these? Because on their own, uh, in isolated cases, they may not create that desired impact on the environment and climate. So we need, for example, to have an entire community using, let's say, solar or biogas for it to have a meaningful impact on the reduction in wood or cutting of trees. So um, th these are things that we need to think about as actors in these spaces. Um, how can we integrate, but also influence other players to integrate the same so that we develop this critical mass? Um, yeah. So, um, what I was talking about is the general overview in terms of uh, the context in, the, in terms of the general overview, but we also look at opportunities which many of which I've already talked about, as you can already see. Um, we see a lot of opportunity around organic uh, products. Um, in Nakuru, um, we are talking to some youth groups that are investing in uh, some of the innovations, like the black soldier flies. I think someone mentioned it yesterday here, um, which can be used, first of all, it is recycling. It is based on recycling waste. That's already green enough. But it is also, at the same time, contributing to the manufacture of feeds, animal feeds, as well as uh, organic fertilizers. So you, you can see such a value chain and the amount of opportunities it creates. Um, and of course, what we call the supportive uh, services in renewable energy, excuse me, um, solar, and, and maybe you've seen this or some of you have adopted this. We've had many people who are saying they use solar for pumping their water for irrigation or whatever use, but it can extend to different activities, whether it's cooling, heating, processing, and so on. So by just adopting these, the opportunities that it creates, these are green jobs. Um, then recycling of waste, agricultural waste. Um, I was telling the group the other side uh, about a company in Rwanda, maybe uh, some people here know about it. It's called Strotec in Rwanda. It recycles rice straws, stocks, into construction material. And um, that's all. And when you, can no, you no longer need to use the building materials, you can uh, turn it into farm manure. And now that brings in the concept of uh, the circular economy, that cyclic um, approach where one item that is considered waste is turned into something usable into another process and this goes around um, and in that way we are talking of resource efficiency so um, there are many innovations we have Safi Organics uh, that is a Kenya based company that is uh, uh, manufacturing um, organic fertilizers from rice husks for example so these kind of things. Um, of course, conservation, conservation may not um, be very attractive or relevant for a program like Joy, but it's 
uh, for you to know. that's a green um, approach. I mean, a lot of aquaculture is based on that. Um, yeah, we have soilless farming, which is more applicable um, in land-constrained environments or settings, urban, peri-urban areas. It's basically uh, the growing of crops through non-soil mediums, water, you know. Um, and extension services um, for some of these climate match technologies. So when we think about all this, it is one aspect to adopt them in our own practices, which is okay, very good. But our concern here and reflecting on the purpose of joy is youth employment. So how can we use these different green approaches to create jobs? How can we harness them in a way that develops a skill set that can be a basis for skilling or rather for training from um, an institution like uh, Shamberere that results into a job opportunity for a young person? Um, so whatever we are thinking, this should be the framework within which we need to look at our green approaches. Some of the approaches might sound very good and very relevant. Indeed, they should continue. But they, some of them may not result in too much employment. If, if I install a solar panel for lighting my house. That's it. Um, maybe once in a while somebody may come to repair it and that's all. But how can we use the same solar to create other opportunities for youth? Uh, and that's where now you bring in the different things we are talking about cooling, heating, processing and so on. So um, next slide please. Yeah, can we go to the next? So these are images that show some of the examples of the different approaches I've just mentioned here. Um, this is the Strotec value chain. Um, you can see rice store. This, this is the finished product, the construction material, and there, it's being applied in construction. Um, next slide, please. Yeah. And this is the Kenyan um, enterprise. Cooling milk using solar. You see a solar panel. Um, that improvising, you know, based on, based on renewable energy. Um, next slide, please. Yeah, we've seen much of that, I think. Solar-based irrigation, next. Yeah, solar-based pumping and uh, irrigation, all that. This is a solar dryer, the gentleman there. I know it's processing meat, drying meat. This is a, a solar animal feed grinder. Um, this is biogas. Um, the biogas can be the construction of biogas systems and take different forms. Um, so this is just one example. And it can take on different shapes and, and, and uh, sizes um, depending on the purpose. Next slide, please. Yeah, this was soilless uh, farming that I alluded to earlier, um, which is uh, growing plants without soil as a rotting medium, uh, including uh, things like aquaponics, which you may have heard about or you know, um, hydroponics and so on. It, it wouldn't be a priority for a program like JOY in a country like Kenya where there is relative abundance of land, but 
it's still something to think about if there is an opportunity for mobilizing youth to go into it. So, so what? No problem. The next one. Now, this for me is the gist of why I'm standing here. Um, so when we are talking about the JOY project, its approach is to skill young people to acquire skills that should enable them engage in agriculture as a sector against the backdrop that young people are less likely to be involved in agriculture for different reasons. Either they don't have access to land or their attitude, their attitude is often fronted as the main uh, reason, but maybe there are other factors. So, um, greening these hubs and any other agricultural program has the potential to create a wider spectrum for the youth to engage in agriculture. So, that's a big, a big, big reason for us to focus on it. So, our assessment overall about the skill situation in green skills is that overall there is a, 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 a skill gap for green skills across not just Kenya but our region, Sub-Saharan Africa. Um, of course, as we know, the sector is a relatively emerging sector. Uh, people are only trying to understand it. There are some early adapters that got to know about it much earlier, like uh, my friend here. Um, but a wider part of the public hardly um, appreciates what we are talking about. So the skill level is low. Um, there is lack of access to, tra to training for green skills. If someone, for example, wanted to learn skills in bio biogas generation, do they know where to go? How many people in your communities are able to, 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 to teach anyone or know about how to construct a biogas system? You know? Um, and some institutions which are, which are genuinely interested in this area. They hardly have the requisite uh, infrastructure in terms of the human resources, the trainers themselves, um, the, the equipment or whatever is, is needed to carry out this form of training. And this is why now we want to make recommendations to IFAD to think of supporting institutions like Shamberere and others. And in the specific case of Joy, you know there are three satellites. Sent satellites. Um, I think raising the capacities of these institutions is one way of promoting access to green skills and therefore green jobs, potentially, isn't it? Um, so, and, and also the other important thing is the curricula. When you are teaching about black soldier flies, what is it that is guiding you? You know? Does a training facility have a framework within which it is providing this? Maybe not. Um, need for increased collaborations and partnerships with the private sector green enterprises. Now, that is very important. Um, one of the crimes, and I'm using that word carefully, um, against our current education system is that it is too theoretical um, and uh, that it doesn't benefit the labor market. So, and in, to some extent, this is true. Now, we are saying in uh, the specific case of green employment, you cannot realize this without collaborating with 
private sector in as far as training, I mean, skilling youth is concerned. And um, if you visit many of your enterprises, a lot of this knowledge is just abundant there. So a lot of you people here are partners in promoting green skills employment um, through pro providing practical exposure to those that might be interested in pursuing some of these. So this is a very, very critical area and uh, JOY program has a challenge to recruit as many private actors into this program if it is going to realize some of these um, objectives of skilling. But at the same time, as I say, that we need to train trainers within these institutions that will train others. So you can see the level, different levels at which uh, skill gap needs to be closed. Um, and then, of course, the aspect of sharing of information, um, of markets, training, and there's something more important there that I forgot to include, and that is green finance. So what is green finance? As you hear, it is finance that is connected to green economic engagements. Now, there's a challenge Unfortunately, the bankers have left, but I think there's one other financier here who is aware of this. Green ideas are new and therefore are less likely to receive um, conventional credit. So globally, this was realized as a challenge to the green agenda and um, the, the players in this space um, came up with uh, the idea of green finance. And uh, there are different green finance programs, uh, globally, regionally, nationally, and so on. The problem is accessing this credit or this finance by those that need it. So partnering with the private sector, excuse me, especially those that are in, fund, in, in uh, finance, can greatly enhance opportunities for green enterprises to access funding. Because then they would be understanding what some of these concepts are. If, for example, um, a funder or a banker um, is introduced to a renewable energy concept where by funding it, it's going to cut costs for the customer and they agree on a repaying plan. You know, th this is an example where private sector financiers can, can be relevant in promoting greens, green employment, green jobs. Um, and then, of course, there's a need to support green innovations, entrepreneurship. Um, startups, there's a lot that is, needs to be done in that area, but again, we are talking of the role of the private sector. Um, next slide, please. Yeah, this is, these are general recommendations for joy, or for in particular in Kenya, given what we found out. So, private sector partnerships, Awareness raising, like what I'm doing here, a lot of it is around making partners aware of what green dimension, the green dimension is, why it is necessary in this JOY program, why it is important to embrace these approaches going forward. Um, then the skills development for green jobs, green business development, um, mainstreaming um, a green dimension into the joy program, eh? like what I found out today, we visited a uh, number of you. So, um, with this, I would like to stop here and um, invite any questions, any comments. 
uh, I know a lot of you have a lot of exposure to some of these approaches, but probably you did not consciously realize that this is actually green when people talk about green. It's a whole new economy, a whole new sector that is gaining a lot of traction in mainstream uh, development. Uh, in some countries, it has, uh, oh, it is already eliciting um, tremendous uh, results. It's creating jobs uh, for young people, for everyone. And in fact, in many respects, it's contributing to sustainability. So um, if there are any questions, they are welcome now. Thank you. Yes. Just a bit of uh, clarification. The problem is not green investment. That so many people have invested in green technologies or green transformation. The stumbling block is um, access to certified carbon credits, and uh, the market is still shaky because it ranges from. Ten dollars per certified per ton of certified carbon emissions reduction to up to 94. So there is a lot of chaos in between here, and that is what is causing a problem in the green investment. But green investment, but you have invested in the green technologies. Thanks a lot. Um, thank you very much. <laughs> Unfortunately, I did, Mr. Makoka. Makoka. Thank you very much, Mr. Makoha, for your um, reaction. Um, yeah, you about another important thing that I deliberately did not talk about because at the level of joy, um, I think green, rather carbon credits, um, may, while they, 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 are, they may be something important for us to know, it is unimaginable for a smallholder farmer out there to effectively engage in the carbon trade business. Um, However, you're right, there are all sorts of challenges for the carbon credit, and it begins with the government policy. Um, however, where the government policy is favorable, but also the awareness is uh, widespread, these carbon credit markets are kind of working. Uh, next question. Yes, sir. Yeah. Um, thank you very much. I think uh, that's a great uh, very interesting thing about some of the things that you guys do. Okay, yeah. So, um, I just wanted to appreciate that indeed that presents a very good picture um, um, generally on what then the feed is like when it comes to uh, uh, green growth um, 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 and all that. In Kenya, um, um, I would actually, I, I thought Michael would mention this. Um, there are quite a number of heavily funded financing mechanisms for promoting uptake of, of, of whether green employment or uptake of those technologies. But then again, the uptake, I don't know whether it is a societal problem. There's a problem somewhere. There's no uptake. So money is there, but then the market, uh, there's no reception is quite poor. That is not to say that um, uh, people are not being informed. There's, there's a lot of 
campaigns happening out there. There's a lot of um, sensitization of forums taking place. Um, there's a lot of partnership with private sector in terms of um, 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 promotion of, of, of some of these technologies, and, and especially when it comes to uptake. So there's all this, this as I mentioned, there's a lot of um, 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 initiatives. Now, um, at some point, as a country, we formulated the national green growth strategy. Um, and that, of course, at the national level, brought a lot of awareness in terms of what needs to be done. I, I don't know. Maybe as a country, it's high time we, we, we figured how then that also is domesticated at the county level. Because as you, as you rightly put it, um, without the market, then we will not be able to promote some of these things. So in terms of policy, and I'm glad that you've talked about that, at the county level, I think we may want to domesticate the national green growth strategy, um, which of course to an extent has been appreciated by the ASTGZ, um, um, so that there is sustainability, uh, there is cohesion in terms of partnerships, um, in as much as yes, we have this financing. Thank you. Thank you very much, Robin. Yeah, I, I want to respond to that very quickly. Robin mentioned something to do with the um, green finance programs that are up there but are not being um, uptaken by the market. Um, you may need to know um, someone from the county is here, I think. There is a whole program uh, that is called financing, I think it's called local climate related initiatives, FLOCA. It's called FLOCA. But the information we gathered is that um, it, the money is land, uh, lying idle in the treasury. It is uh, uh, disseminated at the county level. Um, but part of the reasons we have come across, for example, is uh, the, the proposals that are submitted are not up to the task and they tend to all center around tree planting, nurseries, you know. So is it because those that are putting in the pro these proposals are not aware of other enterprises, green enterprises? What is the problem? So, okay. <laughs> I think the problem with FLOCA has been um, putting in place the county level policy position, which most counties have now done. And it's not that there, is, there are no other proposals that are out there. I can give you an example for Kakamega County. Around 95% of 408 strong households in Kakamega use the traditional three stone uh, cooking, cook stoves. And if you just intervene by bringing in what they call metal grates or stones that uh, en enhance air circulation, you can reduce use of firewood by almost 50%. If you quantify that, these are almost 500,000 or more uh, tons of certified emission reductions. If you can link that to the current price of 54 to 94 dollars per ton of certified emission reduction. These are billions of shillings. It's only that the technology is out there, my brother. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's important for us to have these different perspectives, no doubt. Um, but related to what he's saying, there's a, uh, something I need to talk about. The business skills that promote some of these green enterprises um, in many respects. Um, there are, there's a gap, there are gaps uh, around. It. And, uh, sorry, um, in, in other countries, for example, which we have used to compare with the, what is happening here, there has been a lot of investment around the business model approaches uh, for green enterprises, for them to, to flourish. Uh, so 
there can be different dimensions to this. Yes, there is a problem of access to finance. There is a problem of markets. There is a problem of awareness within the wider market. But for us here as Joy, the, our, our, our contribution or our interventions can only go as far as um, skills uh, is concerned. And within the private sector, I think there is room for collaboration to address some of these things. Um, maybe I'll give him last. Thank you. Uh, mine is just to share uh, our own efforts here uh, as Shambirere TTI in terms of uh, greening uh, not only Shambirere but also the environment around us. I think I was sharing with, the, with Sam yesterday. Uh, we are still at proposed stage and I'm glad that there are people who are quite interested in the same. Uh, maybe through this forum we are likely to get those linkages, the very important linkages uh, to that. Uh, one of the speakers saying that uh, there is finances but uh, there is no uptake. Now we are considering a, a, a means of reducing waste. Actually we are calling it a waste stabilization uh, project which targets bagasse. Around just next to us we have a factory, the West Kenya factory. And slightly beyond the factory there is a huge mountain of bagasse. And uh, we just realized that the leachate that comes from that bagasse, which has, has a very high uh, content of sulfur, is getting into the river. And that is actually when sulfur is mixed with water, you need to become sulfuric acid. So that is becoming very dangerous. So we thought of coming up with a means of handling that waste. And I, we, Madam Principal was sharing with us yesterday about the same. Uh, it is a process that is very simple, environment friendly. Uh, we call it py pyrolysis. Pyrolysis, you simply burn the bagasse or any dried solid waste in a controlled oxygen environment. And you produce biochar. You also produce uh, syngas. Syngas can be used, can be reignited for cooking and you also produce biofuel. So, and you reduce that waste by over 70%. So if you have 10 kilos of waste, you'll end up with a product that is around 30 uh, three. It's a good uh, amount. Um, so when you are looking at this, we, uh, we were looking also at the process of also venturing into municipal solid waste management and I was, uh, we are also informed by the current situation where the Kakamega County government dumps its waste next to River Isiuho. River Isiuho is a very important river in Kakamega County because that is the source of water for the town. But the dump site is next to the river and we are looking at what if we can handle such waste so it is in the proposal. Now uh, the, the, the thing about training comes in because even handling the waste requires um, knowledge. How do you sort the, the waste? How do you identify hazardous waste? Are you able to, to, to separate the different plastics and the like? So those are some of the uh, skill gaps we may be lacking at the moment and also elements of uh, uh, te uh, uh, testing, that is equipment issues and the like. However, what you are saying is if we can get some of these real issues that are on the ground, it is possible to, to uh, uh, green technologies closer to the people. The challenge that currently is shown is on paper. In fact, like if you go to the, to go to the village they don't know. But they know that there is a problem with waste. So if we can bring it more local, use more localist language, language people will, will actually understand. 
it will be easier to bring it into the people. And that is why in our program or project, we were looking at now bringing in the youth, we are also targeting women. In which way? To collect the waste, to handle the waste, and present it to us so that we can do the processing. So that is, to me, I feel like the program handlers at national level, county level, should also come to the ground, not just in the offices somewhere. Come to the ground, listen to the real issues on the ground. Thank you. Okay, so earlier on you mentioned about uh, there's need for increased uh, collaboration, uh, partnership with the private uh, sector. And I'm just thinking um, about the solar system, yeah? Have you guys thought of partnering with the solar companies, yeah? Because uh, let's say, for example, the Imboga guys need a cold room. Instead of bringing in a cold room to be powered by electricity, are they able to support or provide solar panels? that can power the cold room, so that we just promote the green aspect of it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Mine is to Michael. Michael, at the Institute, you talked about innovation and Maybe a mention of BSF, how, how far have you gone in regard to that? Um, we, we, are, we are supporting um, BSF as an innovation in terms of building the capacity of the young people. So I don't know whether um, you've already been able to package that in terms of information and, and also in terms of uh, like figuring out in terms of fabrication how then that plays out. That is to my goal. Okay, maybe I'll just add to what uh, Shamberere they are trying to do uh, in terms of uh, management of Bagasse. So maybe I'll propose, though, maybe scientifically not proven, why can't they grow mushroom first on that Bagasse, then they do the pyrolysis, as they had said. Yeah, um, you know, the ideas are coming up. <clears throat> okay, th th thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Sam. I've been listening to the presentation, and uh, there's an area that uh, struck my mind on uh, post service loss management. And uh, I know that uh, just a few years ago, the Kenyan government banned the use of uh, plastic bags. Eh? for packaging of uh, fresh commodities and other processed commodities. But uh, surprisingly, I've been seeing that uh, these plastic bags are kind of uh, infiltrating into the market. If you go to the market, you'll see that they're using it to package uh, the commodities. And uh, I think uh, I asked some of them, because I have a PhD student who is uh, doing uh, his work in that area, and uh, you are trying to ask uh, why they are doing that. And they say that uh, they have no alternative. So they just have to use it because uh, there's nothing. The government has not provided them with any solution or any alternative. So I thought that that is a gap that you can also try to explore so that uh, we try to look for alternative packaging materials that are uh, environmentally friendly which can be able to help farmers in terms of packaging the fresh commodities, particularly what catch commodities. Thank you very much, Dr. Gogo. Um, yeah, I think there are many, many green, policies, green enterprises that can be crafted from the different environmental challenges that we have. Um, he just gave that example. There are so many. Um, but innovations around that will only make sense if there is a clear skilling strategy for green skills. 
And um, I want to invite you, the different stakeholders, to collaborate with uh, um, Shamberere in uh, you know, devising some of these areas into um, skill areas that, that, that you can support in uh, curriculum uh, creation and therefore put up some sort of short courses, maybe in the long run. Um, we have the TVT expert here. Um, maybe some of them, as time goes by, they, get, they find their, um, their way into the national TVET training. But in the short run, they can still take place as short-term courses, uh, whether on recycling. We don't have to wait until the Kenya government will create a TVET you know, program on recycling, for example. It may never happen, maybe. Maybe it will happen when it is too late. So um, this is my thinking. Um, again, these conversations need to go on um, throughout this program. And I believe um, together we can create a difference in as far as uh, the green employment space is concerned. Thank you very much for listening to me. Thank you, Sam Bosa, for this uh, enlightening presentation and discussion. Thank you all for contributing. Um, so now it's uh, really getting you know, out the, what is the, what, why we are all together. Private sector, civil society, financial institutions, all, those are all the hub um, those are the actors of, in the ecosystem that must gather together, put all the efforts together to make joy work. And uh, we want really to invite you again to work on your matching point form. It's just a way to put down your idea, your, um, what you can offer. Be, again, be concrete, be like really uh, go into details because uh, we would like to give you the opportunity tomorrow to sit with the Samberere team, with the principal, um, with Moses, and really discuss with them one-to-one -one now on your idea, on what you can offer and what you would like to receive with, from, from Samberere, the curriculum we've been uh, talking about the courses, uh, what are the skills that you um, are missing, what are the gaps, and what you can offer as an enterprise, as, a, as an actor involved in this uh, ecosystem in the county, outside the county. We really want this discussion and conversation to be going, yeah? So the, 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 what we invite you to do is to start working on this format that we shared, just to put some, some ideas down, and tomorrow we will uh, give you the space and the time to really engage with this forum, with the Chamberere team, but also with your colleagues here. I already saw a lot of uh, uh, conversation going on, which is exactly what we want. Is it agreeable? Do you think it's a, it's a good way forward? Questions? I know, Grace, that you haven't been uh, with us yesterday. The matching point is a form that you will be given shortly. Sorry <laughs> for this. It's basically just to, uh, to detail what... Oh, you have it. You see? Perfect. Then, really, like uh, this is what we would like tomorrow to to work with you together as a as a group, as we've been doing since day one. We will uh, start tomorrow with a small, uh, well, with a brief um, synthesis of day one and day two, to share with you what we have learned, and of course to hear from you what you can add and contribute to the to the discussion and then we want to go into again more details of the joy project once again we want to retake it from day one but it will be brief after that we really want you to 
one-to-one -one sit down, meet with the principal, meet with Moses and his team, James Forrester, Rose, and really go into the conversation on how this commitment can become uh, an agreement soon. Yeah? In the form you also have, you know, like if you want to add any of your colleagues to the to, to this discussion, please don't be don't be shy. We also have the WhatsApp group and the Google Mail. Yeah? So we really want also after these three days to continue discussing with you guys and uh, understand how we can put all these conversations into practical uh, engagements, co collaborations, how we can really start working together with the Shamberere Hub and uh, under the JOY project. Thank you for your attention. I don't know if I can invite Principal to close for us with a few words. Judith? Can I invite you? Uh, thank you, Valentino. I I don't know whether we should watch. There is a, an article we were meant to watch from Labed Cash. Yes, we will. We will put it. We will put it right after you after the session. We will put it on. Okay. So that people can watch it. Okay. I don't have much to say, but to thank uh, us for the day. It has been a great day, and uh, we look forward to tomorrow. Thank you. So, so to appreciate us for the day, I would like to welcome Madam Ross. She has a gift for all the participants today. So I'm requesting that tomorrow we gear up in that gift. Otherwise, after this, we are offering a cup of tea. So we'll all uh, get outside there and take a cup of tea before we leave. Thank you. Okay, it seems uh, <clears throat> seems complicated. So you, where, where are you seated so they can come with to you? You will find her, it's the beautiful lady in yellow, so you will find her, get your gift, put your signature, then go for a cup of tea and then go back and work on your matching point. I will, I will check on you. Just sit down with your tea, not with your colleague, but with someone else who, who have, you haven't interacted, so you can explore further, further com discussion and... Uh, interactions and then we will come back tomorrow with you for the last day of the learning route thank you